The main factor that determines how an earthquake will affect your house is how well the foundation is constructed. You could have a really well-constructed house, but if the foundation is weak, it could shift in a big earthquake, and then your house would suffer tremendous damage. Let's watch an illustration of this using a nice, strong doghouse. If the house is right on the ground, no shifting or shearing can occur because the house is strong. But if you put the house up on posts, the house is still just as strong. But all of a sudden, you've got a big, heavy house being held up by tall, skinny posts, and your doghouse is suddenly vulnerable to a big earthquake. It can shear. Pretend this is a section of your foundation. Look at how easily it can shear back and forth when a force is applied. But once you nail on some plywood, you can't shear it anymore. In the same way, you can prevent your post and pier foundation from shearing in an earthquake, if you reinforce it properly with plywood. We'll show you how. Formerly, uh, smaller buildings in the county of Hawaii were allowed to be built on a, a post and pier foundation, uh, which was a, a very uh, isolated piers with uh, very little connection to the ground. Uh, these did not do well in earthquake conditions. They were frequently would w either walk off their piers or they would collapse. For those buildings uh, that were on the post and piers, we have developed a retro system uh, of plywood panels that will help uh, to retrain, restrain these, these buildings during earthquake situations. And uh, we think this, this simple means, it involves isolated plywood panels, simple techniques, and concrete uh, foundations, very small ones, uh, will restrain your building and prevent it from, from serious damage during an earthquake. Keep in mind, we're talking about simple rectangular houses that are 1,200 square feet or less and built on flat ground. If your house is bigger than that, an unusual shape, or on a steep slope, you need to talk to a structural engineer. Uh, even though your, your, your building may have survived an earthquake at an earlier date, uh, it, it may be vulnerable to damage from a future earthquake simply because uh, earthquakes can come from a different direction and they do come of greater intensity. No, that's wild. Totally off the deep end. Hey, thanks for warning us, huh? Yeah, bye-bye. What's up? Lita. Oh, no. Stay calm. Let's pack some clothes. We'll go to the airport. We can hole up in Montana. We'll be safe there. She's making the rounds of the whole family again. This time she wants everyone to retrofit their houses with shear walls. Shear walls? How does she even know what shear walls are? Some television program she saw. She's convinced the big earthquake is coming. Okay. We need to do some quick thinking here. When is she coming? I don't know. Let's beat her to the punch. I'm a carpenter, right? Right. We'll pull a fast one on Auntie Lita this time. You've got that look in your eye again. The materials you need are simple. Some two by fours, half inch treated plywood, nails, anchor bolts, rebar, and concrete. To install shear walls, the first step is to build some forms on the ends and sides of your house, six sections total. For each form, you want to dig a hole 12 inches deep or less if you happen to hit solid rock. Each form will run between two piers, and you'll fill the forms with concrete. A pier is 16 inches wide, but your new concrete only has to be about 12 inches wide if you locate it carefully. You need to build one form on each end of your house, and two forms on each side of your house, so you end up with six sections. The two end sections are about eight feet long. The four side sections are at least six feet long. Several neighbors retrofit at once, you can get together and order a truckload of concrete to share. Once your concrete footing is in place, the next step is to cut up some two by fours to make a framework for your shear wall. One piece of two by four is the sill, and it attaches to the anchor bolts, so drill holes in that piece where the bolts go.
Once you have this new sill in place, you want to toenail the cripple studs into place with one end nailed up to the sill and one end to the girder. You set the studs 24 inches on center. The next step is to cut a sheet of plywood to the right size. Then you nail your plywood on and you've got yourself a shear wall. Do this for all six locations in your house. Then when the next earthquake comes along, your house will withstand it much better. The new concrete mini foundation will anchor your house to the ground, making it very difficult for the post to jump up off the piers because you're now bolted to the concrete. The plywood part of the shear wall will help to prevent sideways racking of the house. Now, before you start such a project on your own home, please write to us and we'll mail you a free set of plans that are easy to follow. The address is at the end of this program. It takes a little time and money, but the peace of mind you'll enjoy will be well worth it. guys doing out here in the rain? Rain? This not rain. This volcano sunshine. Yeah, Auntie. Good weather today. Good day for a suntan. Suntan? You crazy or what? I don't understand you young people nowadays. You know how hard I had to struggle when I was growing up? Ah, oh, now you guys just laying around wasting your time. Now get out of those chairs because we got work to do. And we get to work. We need to build the sheer walls. So you can save your house in case of an earthquake. No need, Auntie. No need. No need? No need? What kind of talk is that? That's lazy kind of talk. That's the kind of talk the Romans talk when the whole place came burning down. Look at the house. <gasps> Sheer walls. 